welcome. We are glad to join you at Messy Church. My name is Dorothy Fountain, and I am a part of the Glendora United Methodist Church. At Messy Church, we discover how God's Word brings meaning to our lives and how we can share that good news with others. Together, we sing, do hands-on activities, hear the scripture, share a meal, and worship God. In this service, we will see how God's gifts to each of us and all of us connect us in love and service to others. So bring your life with its ups and downs, straight lines and messy edges, and join in worship of a God who loves us all. Today's reading is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. Christ is just like the human body. A body is a unit and has many parts. All of the parts of the body are one body, even though there are many. We were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Certainly the body isn't one part but many. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, does this mean it's not a part of the body? If the ear says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not an eye, does that mean it's not a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, what would happen to hearing? And if the whole body were an ear, 
what would happen to the sense of smell. But as it is, God has placed each one of these parts in the human body just at like he wanted. If all were one and the same body part, what would happen to the body? But as it is, there are many parts but one body. So the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Or in turn, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Instead, the parts of the body that people think are the weakest are the most necessary. The parts of the body that we think are less honorable are the ones that we honor most. The private parts of the body are, that aren't presentable are the ones that are given the most dignity. The parts of our body that are presentable don't need this. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the part with less honor, so that there won't be division in the body and so that all the parts might have mutual concern for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one gets all the glory, all the parts celebrate with it. You are the body of Christ and parts of each other. Creativity is always part of Messy Church, and this month we're going to be making paper people prayer chains. So what you need to do to do this craft is you need a piece of 8.5 by 11 paper, you need some scissors, a pen or a pencil, and some tape. So the first thing you want to do is you want to fold your paper hot dog wise. And then you want to cut it, cut it down the middle. It's because you only need half of the paper for this project. So when you have your paper cut, you're going to take it and you're going to fold it in half. And then fold it in half again. And then fold it in half one more time. And then unfold it. And then we're going to refold it like a 
fan or in an, in an accordion fold. So flip it back and forth and fold it. And what you end up with is just a fan like this. But what we're going to do with it is we're going to um, put it down on the table this way. Like here's the end of it right here. And then here's where it's folded. We want it facing this way so we can start our, our template on here. What I did is I, I cut out, um, attached to the video, you'll find a, a template for paper dolls. So I used that and I cut one out here. And, and again, I'm going to put it right where the fold is because I have half a person right here. So if I unfold it, it's going to give me a full person. So I put it on the crease there and then I just trace around the edges with my template. And if you don't have a printer at home, that's okay. You can just, you can just free, freehand draw a half of a person on here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is messy church. It's all about cre creativity and trying new things and oftentimes struggling um, is part of it. It's, it's part, of, um, part of the messy part is the struggle. If we don't do this often, if you're not a crafty person, it's good to go out of our comfort zone and do these types of things. Then just take your scissors and cut it out. Now the important part is not to cut here. Don't cut the hand part because the hand part, if you've ever made paper dolls, that's the part that sticks everything together. But you can cut everything else. Open it up, see what you get. It worked. Yay! So I've got my paper people prayer chain. But wait, I'm not finished. What I want to do now is I want to take my pen and I want to write the names of people that I'm connected to. It could be people at work, it could be people at church, it could be people in my family or my neighbors. So I'm going to write a name on each paper person and then on the back I'm going to write a prayer for each of those people. Then when I'm done I'm going to tape them together in a circle and it's going to end up making a prayer chain. And it's to remind us that we are the body of Christ. And it can remind us of our Bible story this month and of um, all we can do um, together when we work together with all our different talents and skills. And, um, and if I want to continue doing this, look what I can do. I can cut these apart and I can make an even bigger prayer chain, which is what I think the Bible story is telling us to do, how when we work all together, we can accomplish amazing things as the body of Christ. So I'm going to make my chain even bigger today. There, I got everybody together. Yay! So there is our messy church creativity craft for this month and it's our paper people prayer chain. I wish you much luck with this creative process. Have you ever thought about the human body? I mean, not just thinking about toes, eyes, 
or the liver, but really considered all that goes on inside of you every day, every hour, every minute, every second. Your body has 78 organs and 37.2 trillion cells. And if you laid out your blood vessels in a line, they would stretch out 100,000 miles long. And did you know that your brain shrinks during pregnancy? Yes, baby brain is real. In a 2017 study published in the journal Nature Neuroscience, doctors found that pregnant women experience a decline in the cortical thickness and surface area in sections of their brain called gray matter. This loss of gray matter primarily occurs in the cerebral cortex, specifically in regions that influence social cognition. That's where we process people's feelings and nonverbal signals. But God's design is perfect. Instead of having a negative effect, this loss improves the brain's ability to process social situations more efficiently, especially when interpreting a baby's needs and emotions. The study found the brain goes through these changes to help with a mother's ability to recognize the needs of her child and more quickly process social stimuli that may pose a potential threat to her child. Don't mess with the mama bear. Our body does not function independently. All these systems, parts, organs, vessels, cells need each other. From blinking to breathing to sneezing, these different parts of the body work together to accomplish specific tasks, often without your knowledge or thought. They work together to form one body. In our scripture reading, we find that Paul is using the concept of the body to show the church that each individual member is needed and is a big part of the beautiful and complex phenomenon that is the body of Christ. Even though there are so many of us, we all belong to Christ and we all form one body, just as every organ, system, cell has a role, no matter the size or importance, we also have a role, no matter the size. As part of the body of Christ, we are called to bring our spiritual gifts to build up the church. Are you thinking right now, now, what is my spiritual gift? God has given you a role, and it's most likely something you enjoy or like to do. The good news is that you don't have to be a superstar preacher like Joel Osteen or Billy Graham. God is calling you and wants your skills, however big or small they may be. I'm a big sports fan, so bear with me on the sports analogy. Teams with one big superstar rarely win championships. Remember Michael Jordan? He did not win his first championship until Scottie Pippen joined the Chicago Bulls. Or in baseball, how many times has a team had one superstar batter but needed a couple of good, not superstar quality, but good batters to bat before and after so that the opposing team could not walk the superstar and get an easy out with the next batter. The Corinthians had many factions in their church with some talented speakers and wise leaders, and yet they were not really living up to the true potential they had as a local church. Paul talks about how we are one body made up of many members, and each person brings something essential to the life, ministry, and culture of the church. You're probably still wondering, yes, 
I know all that, but what is my gift? Think about what you enjoy doing. Do you like the outdoors? Talking to people? Cleaning? Playing games? Or driving? Use what you enjoy for the body. Listen to someone. Be their sounding board. Put away chairs and tables after a service. Write an encouraging letter to someone. Buy a small gift. Zoom with a friend. Fold bulletins for church. Your age doesn't matter. Big or small, God has a role for you. Don't undervalue your gifts or what you can do. Can you imagine what it'd be like if we all had the same gift? Your role in the body may be that of an elbow, but that does not mean you're not essential to the body. The human body is amazing. Your heart, brain, feet are amazing. But seriously, even your nose hairs have an important role. You are amazing. And whatever you bring to the body of Christ, big or small, is amazing. I would like to offer grace before our meal. Please bow your heads. Dear Lord, we thank you for the Raleigh family for providing this special meal. Help us to remember that you too open your hand and satisfy the desires of all living things. We pray you encourage us to work individually and collectively for you, Lord, and for the good of the church. Amen. Hospitality is one of the messy church values, along with creativity and celebration of God. Messy churches everywhere offer hospitality with a warm welcome to those who join. And this mirrors the hospitality of Jesus himself in the way he went out to people. Welcome to everyone, young and old, provided food for the hungry, and enjoyed the food others prepared for him. So as you enjoy a snack or a meal during this hospitality time of Messy Church, please take a minute to reflect on these five questions related to today's scripture. The first question is, what does it mean to be part of the body of Christ? The second question is, Share a time when you used one of your unique gifts or talents as part of the body of Christ. 
The third question is, in what ways do a member of our church work together as the body of Christ? The fourth question is, how will you add to the life of the church? And finally, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 27, we learned if one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part gets the glory, all the parts celebrate with it. So the question is, what does this mean to you? So as you enjoy a snack or a meal during hospitality time of Messy Church, we invite you to reflect on these five questions, what they mean in your life, what they mean to us as the body of Christ, and what it means in the lives of our church. Go now into the world, strengthened by the gifts with which Christ has blessed you. Be generous to others, for Christ has given extravagantly. Live by God's word, walk in God's paths. And may you sense God's wonderful love with you everywhere. We go in peace to love and serve. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.